couple years ago at the shop and we decided to build this storage facility and we wanted to do it right. Now we have quite a few clients who pay for their Canadian winter storage here and uh, I'm just going to run you through today uh, what to do when you're storing your car for the winter. The first thing you're going to want to do when you're thinking about storing your car for the winter is find a safe, dry, warm place. You know, you might not be able to check all those boxes, but you want to find a safe and secure place. You don't want to be woken up in the middle of the night by that little conscience wondering if your car is gone. We have every customer give us their trickle charger of choice. We've got this guy here, the Noco Genius 5. You don't want to overcharge your car, so these kind of new intelligent units are the way to go. New cars, it's mandatory nowadays. An old car, you could kind of get away with disconnecting the battery, but a new car, if you let the thing go dead, if you've got like a LaFerrari, or McLaren or something like that and it goes dead, it's gonna be a nightmare. I mean, we've run into so many times guys who have you know, let their car die and the computer's gone haywire. They've gotta redo everything in the car. In the springtime, you wanna be able to just fire up your car and go. You don't wanna deal with the hassle of, you know, over the winter time, your car changing languages on you or something. There's a couple different options on here. This guy's got the alligator clips. They're nice and easy. We put outlets everywhere so we can run as many trickle chargers as we want. So fire up. You just plug those on. That's a simple, simple way to do it with the alligator clip. That's on, the battery's taken care of. I can see that it's charging. I can close up the hood, not close it too tight on this. So we were able to build this thing right. We put two big dehumidifiers in here and a heater. We've got these big vents here, so we can totally climate control this deal. You know, ideally you want to be between 40 and 50% humidity. You don't want to be too dry where you're going to dry out all your leather and your rubbers on the car, but obviously you don't want to be too moist. You don't want to get corrosion everywhere. You want to be really between that 40 and 50% humidity. A part of building this thing right was we put in CO2 detectors and we put in automatic vents. We've got a fan on the other side. We could leave cars running in here for an extended period of time and it'll just suck all the dirty air out. So it's really kind of personal preference whether you want to put a car cover on or not. I mean, here, we're in a beautiful facility. I'd rather not have to put a car cover on, take it off, kind of risk scratching it. You don't know if the car cover is perfectly clean or not. Here, it can sit all winter, just take a California duster, dust off the car at the end of the winter, and it's great. You know, you really want to have it clean. You don't want to have any salt or any debris from the road kind of sitting on the car. And you should probably give it a good wax. It's going to protect the paint a little bit as it sits all winter. Some guys want to do an oil change before they store it. I'm really kind of agnostic about it. You know, it's nice to have a fresh oil change in the spring. I don't think it's going to hurt the car if it sits all winter with used oil in it. You definitely want to fill the car up with fuel though. That's going to take all the air or as much air as you can out of the gas tank. You're going to have less opportunity for condensation or anything in there. The other thing you want to make sure when you fill it up, you want to have no ethanol in there. Ethanol just eats away at gaskets and it's hard on everything when it sits. The other thing thinking in here is, uh, you know, I don't care if you're in Florida or up here in Toronto, you want to make sure you fill up your rad with antifreeze. You know, guys at the racetrack, they don't want you running antifreeze. So remember, if you're putting away your track car, dump out the rad and put some good antifreeze in, fill it all the way up, and you're not going to get that nasty corrosion that you see on the inside of rads. And then the obvious reason to run antifreeze, here it's minus 10 today, I don't even know what that is in Fahrenheit, but if you're storing your car in a place where it's going to get cold, you could crack the block if you've got water in there to literally freeze and expand, and you're going to be in a whole heap of trouble. You know, I feel like it's kind of an age-old thing. 50% of car guys say, fire up your car, go in there once a week and fire it up. 50% of the guys say don't. Unless you're in a really warm climate and you can really drive it, warm it up, get it off idle, take it out, put it through its paces, kind of run it through all the gears, yeah, I can see the benefit to that. But here, you know, to just fire the car up and kind of, you know, I don't know, get some condensation in the exhaust, kind of leave it on idle. I think you might be actually doing yourself a little bit of a disservice. So in my opinion, just leave it, leave it under the cover or leave it inside and deal with it in the spring. Another thing, not on this Camaro, but over here on this Corvette, convertibles. You don't want to fold up the top, leave it over the winter, get it all creasy and potentially crack it. 
pull it up, leave it taut in its position, and you're gonna have less to deal with, or at least you're gonna be less nervous when you first pull the thing up in the spring. The other thing is you don't wanna flat spot the tires. You know, you, if the car's not moving, it's just sitting there. So you wanna pump up the tires 50, 60 pounds, throw a bunch of air pressure in it. Don't worry about it. You're not driving it with that much air pressure, but let me go grab the air pig. You definitely wanna pump up the tires to a good air pressure and probably more important, even if it's a track car, you don't wanna go out on the first lap and be driving around on square tires. Another bone to pick with guys or something that grinds my gears is don't put the emergency brake on when you're storing the car. When you're done taking your car out for hot laps at the racetrack, don't put the parking brake on either. Calipers are gonna clamp down on the discs and it's gonna get welded or you're gonna warp the rotor. Don't do it. Handy dandy compressor here so we don't have to keep filling up the air pig in the shop. I can just plug this thing in. California duster in lieu of the Gary Clute duster. So as much as I harp on not firing the car up every week, you should have someone check on it or yourself come in, have a look at it, make sure that the tires don't go flat, that you don't have a slow leak. Build a little air pressure. So this guy just dropped his car off. He said he didn't overfill the tires. He just left them at whatever he was gonna run at. So I'm just gonna top them up for him. You know, you fill up the tires and that way you don't have to worry about putting the car up on jack stands. Some guys do that to avoid flat spots. You know, I, I don't know if there's anything to it, letting the suspension hang and having the car not sit, but you know, cars were designed to have their wheels on the ground. I don't really think you need to put your car on jack stands over the course of the winter. You know, the guy did clean the car, but we've been moving it around and I'll give it a courtesy dust here. You know, these things are, are great. They're super gentle on the paint. One thing you don't want to do though, because they do collect a little bit of grease, is you don't want to just sit it on the car. Never sit them on the car. Put them in the interior or something like that. Put them on the carpet, face up. But they do a good job of dusting the car. So the other thing is, is have the windows rolled down. Even just a little bit. You don't want to trap the musty air in the car. So just roll the windows down, have the air flow through. You don't want a funky smell in the car in the spring. There's all sorts of different storage issues that come about when you're storing a car, you know, on a dirt floor or outside. Really try and avoid storing a car outside. You're gonna get a whole ton of condensation up into the bottom of the car. You're gonna corrode a bunch of stuff. Guys do all sorts of funny stuff for mice, things like that. You know, personally, I just set a bunch of mouse traps and, and try and get them, but you know, it really depends on, on where you live. So the other thing to remember, you know, you're mitigating all these risks. You don't wanna have a dead battery. You don't wanna flat spot your tires. You don't wanna get condensation. You don't wanna get corrosion. You know, remember to keep the insurance on your car. If the place burns to the ground, God forbid, you know, you wanna get that check. You wanna be able to replace your car or try to in the springtime. That's the most important part or probably the most fun part of the whole process, obviously, is picking the car up in the spring and taking it out for a 15, 20 minute, even an hour long tour. Go and enjoy it in the springtime. Give us a like, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're gonna have new content coming every week. Drop us a comment, let us know how you guys are getting it done. Let us know, you know how you're storing your car in maybe less than ideal situation. If you're battling mice, battling squirrels, battling raccoons, let us know how you're getting that done too. Thanks for watching guys.